Hey there, it's Steve from Serious Keto, and in this video, we are going to make some cabbage rolls with a Greek twist. Recently, I've had a handful of viewers request that I do a keto cabbage roll video, and honestly, I'm not a huge fan of cabbage rolls. I just find them rather boring. So I decided I would put my own little spin on this, drawing from one of my favorite pre-keto Greek recipes, Spanakopita, which is a phyllo-wrapped mixture of beef and spinach and onion and feta and spices. So I decided I would do something along those lines for the filling for my cabbage rolls. Start with two quarts of water, approximately two liters in a large stock pot, and to that add two cups or 475 ml of white vinegar. Then we'll add two tablespoons of black peppercorns, two tablespoons of kosher salt, and five to ten bay leaves, depending on the size. These are small, so I went with ten. We're going to bring this to a boil over high heat, and while it comes to a boil, I'm going to prep the cabbage. I'm using a three to four pound head of cabbage, and I want to cut out the core plus roughly one inch on either side. You may need to get inside with a paring knife and kind of dig it out a little bit, like this. And then we want to remove any ratty leaves from the outside. So they can either be wilted or bruised or torn. We want to get those off. And now that it's looking good, we're going to put it into our boiling water. We want to go core side up and then using a spoon or pair of tongs, submerge the head of cabbage so that all the air bubbles get out and it quits floating. While the cabbage boils, I'm going to start prepping the insides of my cabbage rolls, beginning with four green onions, which I slice up a few inches into the green part. Next, I'm going to take two large eggs and beat them with one of my favorite kitchen gadgets, the pogo whisk. Set this aside. Then I've got about a quarter cup of loosely packed mint. Once this is finely chopped, it's going to be about two tablespoons. I'm going to do the same with some dill. Again, about a quarter cup, loosely packed, about two tablespoons once it's chopped. And so he cleans, because it's ants. It's been about eight minutes, and now the leaves are starting to separate from the cabbage. You'll find that a leaf or two separates every couple of minutes. So you'll be returning to this as you prepare your filling. I'm going to shake this off and remove it to a wire rack on a baking sheet. And while we wait for the next leaves, I'm going to go back to my filling. I'm going to get the zest of one lemon. And then I'm going to juice this because I need some fresh lemon juice. Looking for one tablespoon or 15 mil. And then I'm going to grate some fresh nutmeg. Fresh nutmeg tastes so much better than the stuff in a jar. Well worth the effort. Smell that? Yeah, fresh ground nutmeg, dear. It's awesome. I was just recording it. <laughs> smell know, it over the cabbage, even. Yeah, yeah. doesn't it smell good? Yeah, it smells awesome. Yep. In total, I'm looking for about one teaspoon ground nutmeg. All right, this is the last of our cabbage. We've got about 10 really good leaves and then a little bit less of the head there, which we'll repurpose for something else. Then we have one pound or 450 grams of ground beef or ground lamb, your choice. I'm gonna brown this on some cast iron using a Yoda spoon. Yoda spoon is not required, though makes food better, I find it does. Once browned, I'll use a slotted spoon to remove the beef to a large mixing bowl. I am going to save this fat, though, because I'm going to use it to cook up my spinach. 8 ounces or 225 grams of frozen spinach. You can use fresh if you want. We just want to make sure that we get this fully cooked through and no longer frozen. Then we'll take this back to our island 
And again, we're going to use a slotted spoon to get rid of some of that fat and push out some of that spinach juice. Then we'll scoop this in to the same bowl with our beef. We'll add our lemon zest. And I tend to mix every couple of ingredients just to avoid ingredients clumping up. So we'll add our mint, our dill, our green onion, and again, give it a little mix. Then five cloves or one half tablespoon of minced garlic, our lemon juice, again, a little bit of a mix, the nutmeg, one half teaspoon of salt, I'm using sea salt, one teaspoon of cayenne, and fresh ground pepper to taste. For me, that's about 15 to 20 grinds. Mix it again. And then I'm going to add in 8 ounces or 225 grams of feta cheese crumbled. If you use the already crumbled stuff, you may want to dial back on the salt that you use. Give it yet another mix. And finally, we add our beaten eggs. Scrape this out. And one final, final, final mix. I'm serious this time. This is the final one. Then we'll begin assembling our cabbage rolls. I fill them about a third of the way full. I want to make sure that once I fold in the sides and start rolling it up, that I'm able to get a decent overlap on the seam. So I fold in the sides, kind of tuck it in a little bit, and roll. And I'm setting these on a baking sheet because I don't know how many I'm going to have quite yet. Continue to roll these up. And here is the final one. This is sort of my radius looking leaf. But the great thing about cabbage rolls, it doesn't matter once you roll it up. In total, I have 10 cabbage rolls, which turns out perfect for a 16 by 9 baking pan, which I'm going to lightly spritz with some olive oil. Look at that fit. Perfect. It's like I planned it. Then we're going to add one quarter cup or about 60 ml of tomato sauce, which I'll spoon over and then brush just to make even. I'll cover this with some aluminum foil. And then into my preheated oven, which I have preheated to 350 degrees or 175 Celsius. After 40 minutes, we'll pull these out of the oven and sprinkle on a little Greek oregano or Greek seasoning. Back into the oven for another 5 to 10 minutes. After 5 to 10 minutes, that tomato sauce now has formed kind of a nice sticky glaze on top of the cabbage rolls and it smells fantastic. I'm going to let these sit for about five minutes before I plate them, otherwise they're just going to be way, way, way too hot. I have to try this, dear. The Greek inside and all this. I put a little of fresh oregano from our herb garden on there, too. So, oops, I'm mangling the cabbage, sorry. There's a little freshness. Got more meat. Mm -hmm. Mm. Cabbage is crispy still, but soft and warm. It's good with the feta and the olives. I put my fresh oregano also. It's really good. Thanks for making this, dear. Ooh. I managed not to mangle mine. Did you see a little cross section there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, good filling. I'm out. Yeah, I see it's Kind of like a little, like a little cabbage burrito. Yeah, it's, it was juicy too, I meant, forgot to mention. Mm. I see what you mean about the cabbage. 
It is soft, but it's got like a crunch to it. Mm -hmm. I just love the way that lemon zest blends, you know, with the feta to kind of balance that salty. So you got the sour and you got the salty. And then just all of the herbs in this. I mean, none of them are like over overpowering. You know, you get that little bit of mint, that little bit of dill. It's very, very balanced. This, uh, this is a win. Now this recipe does take a little bit of time to pull together. The fortunate thing is most of the tasks that you need to do, the actual active part of the cooking, can be done in parallel. So you can be making the filling to your cabbage rolls while the cabbage leaves themselves get all nice and wilty and pliable. As for the leftover cabbage, my wife makes a pretty wonderful creamed cabbage, and that's where I see us using that. Who knows? Could be a video in the future. I also want to throw out a quick thanks to Dennis from Black Tie Kitchen who provided that little vocal cameo. If you haven't watched his channel, I encourage you to do so. I will link to it down in the description below. He has a lot of fun with his videos. But that is it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please click that like button. If you're not a subscriber already, tap that subscribe button, then hit the bell to turn on all notifications. And finally, if you really, really, really enjoyed this video, click that thanks button and hook me up with a little cabbage. Thanks for watching.